Uh, the service of remembrance for the Rice Hospice Program. There's a bunch of details in there if you are interested. National Day of Prayer is May 7th coming up. And thank you to all who came out to Nordland to clean up on Wednesday night. We got an incredible amount of work done. So we are grateful to all of you. Are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? Deb? I had to have my little prop this morning. Anybody seen the mosquitoes yet this year? There's been a few. I'm thinking they're not the biting ones yet, but um, I'm not real sure. But anyway, um, we again at Northland are doing the ELCA malaria campaign. And so this morning and next Sunday, um, some of our young people will be helping us at the end of worship. We'll have the malaria nets out for you to give offering. Um, again, we're making headway in the prevention of malaria. It's something that's very preventable, um, but we help the money that we raise helps to pay for the netting for um, the African nation to keep them um, safe from the mosquitoes and the threat of malaria. So um, if you're writing a checkout for your offering, make the checkout to Nordland and in the memo put malaria campaign. Um, again, we will be taking the offering today at the end of worship and next Sunday as well. So thank you. And thank you. Are there any other announcements that need to be made this morning? Let us then begin our service with hymn number 306. 26, 326 in the red hymnal, softly and tenderly. Would you rise, please? Yes. Pardon me? Oh, you have a, please be seated. So, there is a video on malaria. In Africa, there's something that kills more people than war, more than malnutrition or heart disease. It's the second highest cause of death among adults after HIV and AIDS. Malaria. When the mosquito parasites enter the body, they destroy our blood cells, causing fever, joint pains, headaches, diarrhea. Malaria is a leading cause of death in Africa, but it shouldn't be. Malaria is completely preventable. Ending deaths from malaria is now a goal within our reach. The ELCA, through the ELCA Malaria Campaign, is joining hands with our sisters and brothers in Africa to do our part in this global effort. Your gifts to the ELCA Malaria Campaign will provide life-saving medical care and medicine to treat people with malaria. Teach people how to protect themselves from the mosquitoes that spread malaria, recognize symptoms, and seek treatment. Distribute mosquito nets, provide preventative medication to pregnant women and their babies and begin water treatment to control the environments where mosquitoes breed. Already, in anticipation of your support, healthcare providers are being trained to save lives. We need your help so that no child or no woman, no person should die from malaria. The ELCA is our trusted sister or brother. Whenever we have journeyed together, we have made things happen for God's sake. We pray for God's accompaniment to both of us so that in this journey, as we march together, Christ marches with us as the journey remains long ahead of us. Anything else? Okay. 
Now would you rise, please, as we join in singing softly and tenderly. 326. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promise, which exceeds all that we can desire. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Please be seated.
Just a quick announcement before we sing today. Um, we have chosen to do a major part of the service on June 7th. <laughs> this is the first pastors hearing of this, so. Um, the choir has several numbers we would like to share to end our season for you. Viv will be directing some, Laura will be directing some, and I will be. So June 7th, it's the early service. Tell all your friends, and uh, please come and join us.
Our first lesson comes to us from Acts chapter 4, starting with verse 5, found on page 1696 of our Pew Bibles. The next day the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Sophias, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought to them before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. The second reading comes to us from 1 John chapter 3, starting with verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother's brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. The goal according to John, the the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And we're on page 1666 one, and beginning with verse 1. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them all out, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man run, runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and just as I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them in also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is because I lay down my life. No one takes it up, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, 
and I have authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I'd like to have the children come forward. Good morning. If Jesus is the shepherd, that makes us his fish, right? No, no, that's not right. If Jesus is the shepherd, that makes us his frogs. Is that right? Uh-uh, no. What does it make us? His sheep. Yeah, shepherds have sheep. They don't have frogs. Okay, so let's sing a song about us being Jesus' sheep. Listen, and then you can join in with me, and you can join too. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 Okay, now you got to sing along, and when you say ba 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 you got to go like this, ba 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 Okay, because you're sheep and you're wiggling your ears. Okay, here we go. You'll have to do that too. <laughs> I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. Okay, listen to the verse. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to be a Pharisee. Because they're not fair, you see. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. Thank you. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I don't want to be a fair. Oh, I'll try that again. I don't want to be a Sadducee. I don't want to be a Sadducee. Cause they're so sad, you see. I don't want to be a sad, you see. Do your sheep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I don't want to be from Babylon. I don't want to be from Babylon. Cause they only Babylon I don't want to be from Babylon I just want to be a sheep ba 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 I just want to be a sheep ba 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 And I pray the Lord my soul to keep I just want to be a sheep ba 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 Let's pray Lord help us to be your sheep Not that we're sheepish But that we follow you because you are our good shepherd. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you very much. I have a particular set of clients. I enjoy their company, mostly. They're kind of like family to me, these clients. And I think they enjoy my company, too, though it's a little hard to tell. I'm on the job every day and every night, too, so I seldom go out for dinner or movies. I live in West Texas. I work exclusively outside. I have a dog named Shep. What do I do? Shepherd, yeah. Well, that's a little hard to guess after that song, living in. Okay, that's right. I am a shepherd. Sheep are interesting critters. Somebody once joked that God created sheep to make chickens look smart. And most shepherds don't laugh at that joke because they know it is so true. If the lead sheep of a flock should accidentally wander off a cliff, guess what the other sheep will do? <laughs> if the lead sheep should refuse to eat from a feed bucket, guess who will actually starve? The rest of the sheep. Sheep, you see, have this interesting instinct to flock together. To follow the other sheep, 
and they will do so literally without thinking. So in many ways, sheep do make chickens look smart. But on the other hand, sheep are really good at finding food and water. On the other other hand, unless they are moved, they will graze a field right down to the dirt, shave it clean. And that is one of the reasons that shepherds get so few days off. Because unless they have someone to come in and spell them watching the sheep, they have to lead the sheep to greener pastures. How do shepherds lead their sheep? Well, sometimes they go ahead, but most of the time they don't go running, come on sheep, come on sheep. If they did that, particularly if they yelled at all, the sheep would probably run off in another direction. You see, sheep don't follow anything very good except other sheep. And so you will usually find shepherds behind the sheep. Sheep have to be driven. They don't give their sheep orders because the sheep would not understand. One shepherd said, I just talk out loud or maybe sing as I walk behind the sheep. And the sheep seem to be re reassured by the sound of my voice, and they wander on ahead of me. It's like they trust my voice. Sheep need to be protected. There is a story that says that wolves were decimating the farmer's flock. So the authorities raised a bounty on the wolves, and two hunters decided they could use the extra money. They headed out to the wide open spaces to shoot some wolves. Well, they made camp for the night. They had just fallen asleep under the stars when one of them woke up. He looked around him, and in the reflection of the campfire, he saw 25 pairs of eyes and gleaming teeth. He woke up his partner, and he said, Wake up, wake up, we're rich. Shepherds work to protect their sheeps, sheep, excuse me, <laughs> sheeps, their sheep from wolves, coyotes, and dragons. Well, not dragons, but you get the idea. Sheep are pretty defenseless. Sheep do not have sharp claws or teeth. They need protection. And many a shepherd has been bitten or scratched while fighting off a predator. Which, of course, brings up the difference between shepherds and some hired hands. As one shepherd put it, sometimes I had to be gone, and we'd hire somebody to look after the sheep. And some of them, well, if a coyote came near, they might yell, they might throw rocks, but they will not get in there and mix it up with a coyote. He goes on and says, Now I'm not saying that I would die for the sheep, but I am saying that I will go a lot farther for the sheep than a hired hand will. The Bible tells us that Jesus is our shepherd. And in many ways, he is a lot like a shepherd. Just like shepherds, Jesus seldom got a day off. In fact, we read in the Bible that sometimes he didn't hardly have time to eat because he was so busy. And just like shepherds don't normally laugh at sheep jokes, I don't think Jesus laughs either when angels joke about how dumb human beings can be. But all kidding aside, Jesus takes care of his sheep. He picks us up when we fall down. He encourages us. He sees to it that we have spiritual food and water. He guides us away from trouble. At least he tries to guide us away from trouble. And like the old poem says, when the going gets really rough, he carries us. Remember what I said about how sheep are often led from behind? 
Well, in some ways, you could say that Jesus leads us from behind, too. It would be nice, perhaps, maybe, for Jesus to be out in front of us where we could see him showing us the way. It would be nice to have more specific signs, like maybe a daily text or email from Jesus telling us what we should do on a particular day. That way, we wouldn't have to think for ourselves. He could just make our decisions for us. Of course, the problem with that is that if Jesus led us so directly, we wouldn't be human beings anymore. We would be more like pets, more like sheep. As a matter of fact, as I think of it, sheep are a lot freer than that. Sheep within limits make a lot of their own decisions. They decide when to eat, which plant to eat, where to wander, what to drink, and when. The shepherd doesn't move their feet for them. The shepherd doesn't put food in their mouths or move their jaws so they can chew. The shepherd does not micromanage the sheep. And so, too, God, in his wisdom, allows us to be human. He guides us through the Bible, through Holy Spirit, through the counsel of friends. But he lets us make our own choices. He even lets us make bad choices, although he doesn't want us to make bad choices. He does his best. He does his best to guide us in paths of righteousness. But he also lets us be free. And that way, and that way we go through life as people and not as robots. Jesus leading from behind. But although Jesus may lead us from behind, he is nonetheless still always there, just like a shepherd. Sheep need a shepherd because they are vulnerable. They can and they do get hurt. They are oftentimes quite unaware of the dangers around them, so they get in trouble. And is that not true for us, too? As the saying goes, it's a jungle out there. There are traps and pratfalls and pitfalls and many things that we are not even aware of. We wander through life sometimes as though we were indestructible, but we're not. We launch into things, we push our limits, not knowing what direction we are aimed in like a driver trying to text on two phones at the same time. But Jesus, like a shepherd, is there to guide us through dangers, leading us from behind, and therefore, like sheep, though we may not see Jesus' face, we know his voice of comfort and encouragement. Jesus leads us from behind, and invites us to do the same for others, too. And finally, Jesus is no hired hand. He proved that he wasn't just a hired hand when he went to the cross. And he says to us today, the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Now, as I thought about it, I thought, well, real shepherds would not die for the sheep. I mean, what good would that do? But shepherds who actually own their sheep will take great risks to take care of those sheep. They will risk getting bit while fighting off a coyote. They will risk taking a spill as they retrieve a sheep from a steep hillside. Actual shepherds will take risks for their sheep, but they will not die for them if they can help it. And that is where Jesus, the good shepherd, goes even beyond that, 
because he really did give his life for his sheep. And so we have this particular Sunday. We have it every year, and it is called Good Shepherd Sunday. It is a day on which we honor Jesus who has acted in so many ways like a shepherd. He is the one who seeks us out when we're lost. He is the one who guides us back to the sheepfold. He is the one who walks with us day by day and the one who gives his life for us. Jesus is truly our good shepherd. I'd like to share a song with you. It will be very familiar, at least the words will be, not the song. But it's how Jesus takes care of us. One night I had a dream as I laid upon my bed With pictures of my life just a rambling through my head We walked my Lord and I leaving footprints in the sand But then something caught my eye that I didn't understand You see Sometimes there were two tracks, but at other times only one. And the times when I was alone, it was the times when the journey was no fun. So I said, Lord, what gives? Why did you walk out on me? Right at the very time I could have used your company. And he said, child, I made a promise I'd always see you through. But now you're only seeing one set of tracks where you're figuring that there ought to have been two. Well, my child, I'd never leave your hand. I'm thinking that it's time you knew when your life was the darkest, I carried you. So every now and then when the clouds come rolling in My dream reminds me, yeah, that he'll be by me through thick and thin Cause I recall the words that he spoke to me that day And when I close my eyes, I can even hear him say He says, child, I made a promise I'd always see you through. But now you're only seeing one set of tracks where you're figuring that there ought to have been two. Well, my child, I'd never leave your hand. I'm thinking that it's time you knew when your life was the darkest. I carried you, yeah, he says, child, I made a promise I'd always see you through. But now you're only seeing one set of tracks where you're figuring that there ought to have been two. Well, my child, I'd never leave your hand. I'm thinking that it's time you knew when your life was the darkest. I carried you, yeah, when your times, when your life was the darkest, when the time, when the hills were the steepest, when the times, when the sand was the deepest, I carried you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are our shepherd and that you lead us in such a way that we get to relive real lives as human beings. Sometimes it would be nice if you just tell us what to do and we do it without even having a choice, but then we wouldn't be human beings anymore. And so we thank you that you are, in your wisdom, just the kind of shepherd we need and one who carries us when we need it the most. Thank you in your name. Amen.
Our next hymn is in the green hymnal, number 481, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. The tune will be a little bit different than is printed in the, uh, in the hymnal, but, oh, it's in the red, what number is it in the red book? Oh, you're just playing it, okay. We'll sing the words from the green book, but the, the tune's from the red book, so, okay, very good. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. 
If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please join with me in our offertory prayer. Gracious God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, you have called us from death to life from silence to speech, from idleness to action. With these gifts, we offer ourselves to you. And with the church through all the ages, we give thanks for your saving love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in this Easter season, we rejoice at the resurrection of, of Christ. We ask that as our good shepherd, we may follow him because he gave his life for us. Lord, in your mercy. For those who preach the word, especially for our bishop and our clergy, we pray that they might follow the traditions of Paul and Barnabas and speak out boldly to build up people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, for Christian churches throughout the world, that they may experience unity and may together follow Jesus, their shepherd. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the nations of the world, that they may turn from oppression, from imperialism, from warfare, and seek the welfare of their people, particularly to seek the welfare of the weakest among them. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the homeless, the hungry, and the sick. They find in you shelter and healing and guidance, and that you would lead them to springs of living water and wipe away the tears from their eyes. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for mothers everywhere and those who give motherly care that they may follow the example of our Good Shepherd who leads his children to good pasture. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, to these prayers we also add the prayers of our hearts and particular prayers for A.V. Hunt's great-grandson Marcus who has viral and bacterial meningitis, that you would bring healing to him. We also pray for healing for Earl Peterson, Leon Peterson's brother, who is in intensive care with a lung, lung infection. To these and to those we name in our hearts, please bring your healing and your hope. Lord, in your mercy. We give for thanksgiving for the apostles who gave us an example of what it means to live in, in faith. Barnabas and Paul and all the saints and martyrs. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs>
receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is from the Green Book, number 551, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Go in peace, serve the Lord.